for the four Ps, people, planet, purpose and profit. I'm Swanette and I'm your host. Welcome to my podcast, Holistic Creators. My name is Juanette, and I'm your host. Today, my guest is Katja Rosanen. She is a best-selling author, spiritual mentor, success coach, and the creator of Client Attraction Story System, a step-by-step -step program for purpose-driven entrepreneurs to craft stories that sell. After working as a supervisor in one of the world's leading business banks, She obtained two master degrees in spiritual psychology and spiritual science. She has now dedicated her life to helping clients discover the power of personal stories and create a business they love. So, welcome, Katja. I'm really happy to have you today on my podcast. <laughs> oh, thank you for having me. It's such a pleasure to be here today and get, uh, get this opportunity to share my message. Yeah, I already got uh, a little bit information about the way you had and I'm, I'm really curious to know a bit more about yeah what were the steps so coming out of a corporate world and going into spirituality what have you done what were the steps can you tell me a little bit in our audience about the journey sure. you've been through sure thing because that's quite curious actually I, before jumping I was working in the, one of the world's leading business banks as a supervisor As my how my mind operates is really good with systems. It's really good with the understanding how systems operate. And that's how I ended up working in banking. But then there was a calling in my heart that got stronger and stronger. But I kept resisting and people around me said, well, you need to stay with your job. Don't be silly. Don't do anything drastic. And I felt like I want to help people like different ways. And this has been a calling I have had in my heart from such a young age, but earlier as well, I listened to people and I went to the traditional route to study in ad business administration and marketing. And then I ended up working in banking. And what happened to me, what actually pushed me <laughs> to take that leap of faith, I needed um, something to be, a, have, to be able to have the courage to say yes to my calling. And that something for me, in my case, was a pain in my chest area. And when you have a pain in your chest area, you start taking things more seriously. And I knew like that it was all about saying yes to my calling. But I did go to the doctors and they said, everything is okay. This is just stress related. And I just was like, yes, I know where that comes from. <laughs> It's because I was in the wrong place. Like I was staying there because it was a good job. It brought good money in. Uh, but I wasn't really aligned anymore with that. It served its purpose. I learned a lot. I'm super grateful for the opportunity that I had. But there came a time when it was time to jump and take that leap of faith. And when I had those issues with my health that was the calling for me like okay I need to do this or my body is saying me okay we quit <laughs> I'm not cooperating if you are not following your calling and then 2012 I did take that leap of faith and I said I'm leaving banking and I start supporting people before that I had prepared like I have a <laughs> this mind that makes like okay let's get you ready so I had studied spiritual life coaching and I had got certification on that 
And then I took the leap of faith and feeling like, hey, okay, spirit, now I'm here. I, I changed. I said yes to my calling. So bring me the clients. I'm ready. <laughs> and it didn't really work like that. Like when you take a jump, the parachute doesn't open immediately. And that felt like super scary as well. Like I started to work a lot to figure it out the marketing because I had never been an entrepreneur I hadn't I have always worked for somebody else so it was a learning journey like whoa okay how do you do that I know how to do coaching but how do you do all the other parts that came within the building a business so I spent, started spending hours and hours studying marketing, studying like business, like the, how to build a steady foundation. And I was struggling to then start attracting clients because I just wanted to help and serve everybody. <laughs> like, and, and then I was like, okay, how does this work? And then I started to finally figure out, because I got some help from people who are good in business. They helped me then to put some pieces together. And I started getting one client here, one client there. And what I noticed, they came to me with the, what I would call very challenging life experiences that they had gone through. They came for healing. And I started feeling like I want to learn more how I, how I can truly support them. And I spoke with my teacher where I had studied and he was like, yes, of course. Why, if you feel the calling, like, why don't you then look for something more? And then I started seeking and I did a Google search. I started, I typed in like, spiritual psychology master and boom I found University of Santa Monica and I was like I knew I'm gonna go there I, I just I didn't study all the things that what they are offering like when I landed their page I knew that this is where I'm gonna study I'm gonna go I'm gonna move to US and of course my family again was like you're going to do what? They all, <laughs> they were still recovering from the <laughs> leaving banking. And now I was saying, yes, I'm going to move from Spain, where I already was living. Uh, I'm going to move to US to study in this um, university and studying spiritual psychology. So I, I followed that. I followed that dream and truly I'm so glad that I did because that was truly life sense changing experience for me. Discovering how we can see life from soul's perspective, how to apply the spiritual psychology principles into your own life. First of all, own life, because that's where we start. I believe everything starts within. And then I could help my clients as well with the same principles that I have learned and I have experienced. And that was a huge shift for me with my business, like discovering also the beauty of um, our soul's journey here. Like, yes, going through challenging life experiences and I have been there too, like experienced very dark times when I was 16 years old. And then like healing from those. And then there comes the time when you are ready to share the stories. And then with my business mentor, he was, she was helping me to really tune in. Like that is where my gift is, like helping people to share their stories because I had hidden mine for 15 years and then I found the courage to share it and that also was such an experience for me that helped me to create greater connection with people 
And that also helped me to start attracting more clients. And then I was like, yes, I see that it happened. When I opened up, the clients came like before I had such a struggle. But now I can see that this, this works when, when I opened up. And that was kind of what led me to creating the client attraction story system program and focusing on helping people uh, to share their stories. Because I believe there is such a power in our life experiences and those things that we have gone through can truly help somebody else. So that's my journey, like in a very short, short sentences, short time. So that's what I wanted to share. Yeah. This totally resonates with me. So of course, um, it has been part of my journey too. I, I'm uh, a chemical environmental engineer. So I studied yeah. something that is really uh, basic study. And uh, after a while, I, I got this calling. So I have to do something different and study coaching and uh, also spirituality and all this kind of stuff. And I really can get it, not only like uh, leaving the corporate world, but going into something that is for a lot of people like kind of um, weird, crazy, you would say, yeah. So um, this is really a huge step and not only doing this, but also moving from one place to another to, to study and to experience um, your journey. So this is really, you have a great story already. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And uh, one of the things I wanted to mention when I was in the banking and I was studying spiritual life coaching, I often skip saying the spiritual because life coaching already was a big thing. Like I was like, okay, if I say spiritual life coaching, that's going to be too much. So <laughs> I adjusted my messages to say life coaching. And that's sometimes also what we can do to help others to understand things like bit by bit sharing things yeah yeah definitely so um you said that this calling was on body level that you felt that you had this pain in your chest and how did you get that this was your calling and not just really um you know, like, like a health problem or that something that could be resolved by a doctor it was inner knowing it was truly of course, I, I did go to a doctor and did all the tests. So it is one thing is knowing and another thing is checking out. And that's actually what we are doing when I study spiritual science. It's also like checking out things. So I did do the physical level checks. And, but there was strong inner knowing that I am okay because I knew I had got this calling before and I kept ignoring it. So it felt like, okay, my body is telling me it's time. I can't keep ignoring. It is really time for me to say yes. Yeah, so the signs need to become bigger and bigger and bigger until you get it. Okay, now <laughs> this is like having this huge board. <laughs> Yeah, I sometimes can be a little bit stubborn, so <laughs> I need like, okay, like the universe brings you something that wakes you up. Yeah. And for me, that time was having a chest pain because that really, of course, it's scary when you have physical, feeling of physical symptom, and especially in the chest area. So that got my attention. And when you started to bring up the idea, okay, this is, is a second time that I got a calling. Um, we will speak about the first one later. Um, so yeah, what did change? So you, you decided, okay, I, I have to follow uh, this new path that is somehow showing up in front of my eyes and giving me these triggers. What changed then? So can you really tell me a bit more about the being in this situation and then changing into the other, like being in banking, then starting like working in, in spirituality and psychology and all this. I, I feel like now when looking back, <laughs> I was like, wow, I was really brave <laughs> to do that leap of faith. Because <laughs> of course, back then I didn't 
know all the things that are involved becoming an entrepreneur. And, and of course, I was thinking like, okay, if I can figure out a banking system, how hard can it be to figure out how to be an entrepreneur? So that gave me the courage to do the jump. And of course, it's a big adjustment. Like before I went to office 96, I had a team. I was a supervisor, so I had a team that I coordinated. And, and then all of a sudden, I was on my own building my business. And that was a shift like, whoa, okay, this is very different. And of course, it brought also freedom since I was my own boss. I was able to do things my way. But then it was also scary in that sense, like there came like, okay, how can I make this work? And then I started putting a lot of hours into learning and growth. And of course, my mind goes really fast. So sometimes it got really impatient with me. <laughs> like, <laughs> I hope that things would move faster. But then now when I look back, I see that, yes, there is a certain, certain learning curve that needs to take place. And, and that all is part of the growth and part of the, part of the learning that we do here. And one of the things I started very early on, I realized I want to be surrounded with like-minded people. I want to have some support. So a couple of my friends back then were in Barcelona, they were also entrepreneurs. So I started masterminding with them, just meeting uh, for lunch and talking about these things, how how to be an entrepreneur, basically what's working, what's not working. And then I also started a Facebook group called Lightworkers Who Succeed on Purpose that brings like-minded people together so that we feel that we are not alone on the path, that we have support. And that way, that was also offering a service, but it was also very supportive for me to start meeting with people who also had a dream, who also wanted to do something to help others raise awareness. And that way, we, I started building this network of like-minded people. And that has been such a key thing for me. And maybe that's also for your audience if they're tuning in here, like that is one thing that can keep us going as we are taking steps forward on the path that sometimes is the less traveled one. I totally agree with you. So of course, being an entrepreneur and starting really from scratch, this means you have to learn a lot and, um, if you have people around yourself that are in the same situation or even that are a little bit ahead and can be mentors, this really helps to not make all the, the faults by yourself, but you can, can jump over and, and get the strategies that already worked for others and perhaps you can adapt them. And of course, knowing you are not alone in, in this kind of phase and, and finding out your way, this is always, yeah, you, everybody needs support and mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So if, if you have a mastermind and yeah, this is like sharing information, supporting each other, this is really great. Definitely. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That has been really in the beginning when I started just to be open and honest here, I was thinking I can figure things out on my own. And of course, like I had took a leap of faith and I invested in, in my studies. It was, a bit challenging to invest and to get support being in a part of master high end mastermind. But when I did that, I was like, whoa, that was so amazing to get support and guidance. And that has just accelerated the process as I didn't always need to go the hard way, like 
trying and okay that didn't work what does then i try another thing that didn't work but you can also learn from others you can like tune in and learn from them so you don't need to always try and test out everything because there are some proven ways that work and so that was a big game changer for me being able and willing to invest in in my growth and in my business yeah and how did you feel like coming from a bank being in a team and like this was the the co corporate corporation that was like being the the brand outside and now you are the one you are the person that that is a brand how does this feel for you it feels good actually like because now i can be totally aligned it is me who decides how and what i'm planning and what are my plans how what i'm offering because when you are part of a big corporation you are not always the one who makes decisions you need to often follow the path that is given to you and just make it work in your mind so that you can stay and do the work that you meant to do and but now it is such a freedom to be able to be the one who makes those decisions and can do the work that feels like me like it it is it is what I put out there that it is everything I put out there and that has been learning curve as well learning to say like even if I get something from my business mentor or copywriters if it doesn't feel that those are my words then saying okay we need to find something else that doesn't align with me and that has been a learning curve as well like learning to honor my own own alignment And then just being able to say like, okay, that works for me, that doesn't work for me. Because there are so many experts out there and everyone are giving advice, which can be very solid and valid from their perspective. But you need to also check what, it, what works for you. So that has been one of the big learning curves that I have had uh, when, when I have been on this entrepreneur journey to really crown myself and staying true to my my own way of how I want to operate here in the world. What I sometimes hear from my coaches is that uh, when they become an entrepreneur, they are somehow afraid about showing them themselves, becoming visible, showing themselves with their story. They, they kind of, yeah, it, it's kind of fear that then when they get vulnerable uh, showing up with a story that this can have a bad impact on them so can you tell me a little bit about this from your perspective yeah i totally get that like it is vulnerable to share our stories it is sometimes scary like what will people think what if they judge Well, if they, whatever is the story that you are making in your head, what would happen if you share openly your own, own journey? And one of the thing is that people judge you anyway. Like whether you are sharing or you are not sharing, people, that's what we do until we kind of grow and learn how to be less judgmental, but it's very human nature to give labels, give opinions. So that's happening regardless. So then it does take courage to share our own journey. And I, I know this, that it's possible to do, because I was hiding my own journey for 15 years. As when I was a teenager, I lost a loved one to suicide and that was such a traumatic experience for me as that loved one was my first boyfriend that I put that story into a storage room for 15 years. I was like, I can't talk about it. 
And that was like a block between me and other people. Was, I didn't share about it. I was hiding it. I, I did not ever want to bring it up. But people kind of sense there is something that I'm not telling. And, and that created the distance. They felt like my heart wasn't really open even though they might have not said it that way, but energetically there was this block. And when I found the courage to start sharing, and this was a process, it didn't happen overnight. It was a healing process that started from writing and I started writing about it. And then there came a day when I felt I'm ready to talk about it. And I shared when I was in a share, like in one of the study groups where I went, I shared with one person there. And I felt the connection that came afterwards. Of course, there was part of me saying, oh, you shared too much and all these self judgments. But there was a part of me that felt such a freedom and such a connecting, connection with that person when I was able to open up that that was stronger than my own self-judgments. And when I had that courage to share with one person, when I did share it next time, when the opportunity came, it was a bit easier. And then I started talking about it more. And that just opened, I feel like that really truly opened the doors to connect with others. And I believe this is also the power that we have in our stories. Like if we feel that, and there might be all kinds of stories that we are creating about our story. One of them is like, the fear of the judgments, then it might be like it's how it positions us. It might be like fear or guilt or shame. But when we have the courage to work through all those things and start sharing the story, there is magic that happens. And it is also one of the things I often share with my clients. It's because they ask when I'm ready to share. And this often works. If you feel that life happened to you, you might be still in the healing journey. But when you start feeling life happened for you, then it's time to start sharing. Because you realize what the, the learning that you gained from the experience that you went through. So that's just the power and really truly also honoring and respecting where you are on the journey. Because it, everybody's journey is unique. So for some, maybe they are ready to share straight away. For some, it might take some time and that's all okay because we can use everything for our growth, learning and upliftment here. I totally hear you. So I also see that if we get out with our story and show ourselves kind of vulnerable, other people see, okay, they can open up as well and go deeper into their story and share more about that. If you're mm -hmm. close, they, they will be close. So um, working with people on this level, it is, I think, um, for us, a, really a gift that we got through this process and into this growth state that we are able to share our deep stories to other ones and allow them also to share their stories. Mm, absolutely. Because that truly builds the connection. And it, when you have the courage to share also, it kind of opens the door for others. They feel, like you said, that they can now share too, because you started that. Mm. 
but somebody needs to start. Like somebody needs to start the process. And also you can observe like when you are listening to successful entrepreneurs and when they share about their experience, their life, just next time you listen to somebody, check how you feel. Because often that is the place when they actually share something vulnerable. They share something that show them like, hey, they life like things happen for them too and they went through the process to work through things and they maybe they were not perfect either they struggle they fail but they found a way through and that makes them seem like experts in our eyes because they might have experienced something similar of the situation where you might be in right now. And then somebody's sharing their story. Where you feel like, hey, I can relate to that. And then they share their journey from that experience towards the, in, what, towards the resolution, towards what they learned. Then it's like, wow, okay. That gives hopes and inspiration. I maybe I can do that too. So that is there is such a power there, like just having that opening. And and one of the things often that has helped me personally, and maybe this helps you too, is to focus on why you are sharing your story. I am sharing my stories because I believe that they can bring inspiration, that they can bring light when people might be going through very dark times, that just having the glimpse of light that there might be a better day ahead because that's what I experienced in my darkest moments. Like there was these glimpses of light so I just hope that I could be the dark glimpse of light to somebody. Hmm. Definitely. So you walk the talk. It is not just like you learn something and then you teach it, but this is part of your story. This is part of your process you have been through. And therefore you have these experiences and you can connect to other people and understand them uh, even more because you know all that from your own life and it mm -hmm. is not like um, you heard about this and uh, this is part of what you have been through definitely yes. so okay. so can can you give our audience a little bit more information how this would work if the, if they want to to work with you so or if i would be your client what would you do with me <laughs> every client is unique so we would start checking in your dreams what is the goal that you have and sometimes it might be a little bit blurry and that's okay because I can help you to gain clarity of what is your big dream and sometimes we might be even afraid to dream so we would work on those like clarifying the vision where you are heading because it's so much easier to get there when you know where you're going. So that would be really the first step. And then also to see if there is any resistance, any blocks, anything that might be on the way for you to share your story. And that would be like really diving deep and doing clearing on those things that might be support, even sabotaging your efforts to share. And then we would make an action plan strategy, how you can share your story. And then we would actually start tuning in what's the story for you what is your story to share and you might have many but then it's always come checking in 
what's the story to share now? And that often comes if you're an entrepreneur, it would be checking in what is the offer that you are making. So then we can find a story from your life experience, authentic story that supports your offer. And once that is done, then we craft that story so that you get ready to share it. So that's very simple way to put together what we would be working on and more the order how things would work when we when we would work together. Hmm. So um, starting uh, with kind of analysis, uh, what are the goals where you want to go? Are people already um, at the beginning clear about that if they have still their blocks? So can they really think this big where they want to go? If I could imagine if I am still in this phase where I had all these kind of blocks <laughs> that are already cleared, but during this time, I could only think a little about what my vision could be. So how can this unfold uh, in this process? And that might be, I would meet wherever you are. Mm -hmm. And it is not always having a grandiose goals. It is having goals that are aligned with you. And yes, your goals might grow as we would work together. But it's also like we all have our own calling, our own purpose. And all the things are valuable. Big, small, all actions are counted. So it's really, truly honoring you and sometimes it's also building the confidence like let's move towards that goal that you have and then when you start seeing the progress your goal might also grow so just having that support there and i often see the potential in people But it's, of course, up to them to decide what's their goal, goal, because that is very, you need to be fully behind your goal. Yeah, of course. And so how, um, you studied a lot uh, of different things. How does this study help you now at the moment to support your clients um, the way you're doing it? The awareness of spiritual psychology principles, it helps to see the life from different perspectives. I say through the eyes of our soul, and that is all about the learning and growth and upliftment that happens here. So it is seeing these life experiences, it true, like what am I learning through that experience? And when we discover the learning, it becomes easier to share it. So I can help and assist there if it's on the healing part of the journey. But I usually I have worked with people who are more tuning in towards like I'm ready to start sharing. I have done the healing and now I'm just building the courage to start sharing this story. So they have already maybe an idea what they learned through the experience, but I can just help them to clarify it and how also to express the story that they want to tell so that it works as well strategically. If you're a business owner, you want to also get the connection with those clients that you are meant to help here. So the story is part of that and the story is that helps you to create and attract the connection. Mm -hmm. What are typical clients that come to you? So you already said they are already on, on the journey and discover things. They know that they have a story and they had a healing process, but what, what are typical clients to attract? My typical clients are spiritual entrepreneurs who have created a product or an offer 
a service. And then they might feel like they have done a lot of things right. Like they have created something that they know works, they know has value, but yet they struggle to attract clients to that. And that might be very much that there is not that connection with the ideal clients. And that is where the story comes in. So they have done the work to figure out what's their expertise and what they want to offer. They have done the really hard work to narrow down the, <laughs> those things. And then like they are so ready they, to serve and support clients, but there is this disconnection with the ideal clients. So this, this is where I normally come in and help them to start sharing this personal experience that builds trust, builds credibility and connection. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely see that. So I'm more like the, the coach in the healing process mm -hmm. and um, we can end up with, a, with an idea, with a vision, and then you would be the one like uh, bringing it on the road, really bringing out the story of them and yeah, yeah, helping yeah. them with, with their business. Yeah, great. Yeah, that's beautiful. <laughs> collaboration. <laughs> I love collaboration. <laughs> this is the way we, we met each other. So, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, and um, yeah, I have seen that you now have uh, a challenge starting uh, in September. Uh, can you tell uh, a little bit about your offer? Because I'm sure um, uh, people are now curious about uh, what, uh, how they can come in contact with you, what they can learn from you. And I think this challenge is really a good start uh, to get an idea what you're doing. Can you tell a little bit about this challenge you're doing? Sure thing. Thank you for asking. I am offering courage activation. As you might have heard, if you have been listening to this interview, I've mentioned courage so many times because I believe courage is so necessary when we are business owners, when we are entrepreneurs. We need courage in so many different things, whether it is creating a personal share on Facebook, whether it is sharing the offer, whether it is asking more money for your services, whether it is sharing your story, courage is needed. So courage activation is free five-day challenge where I will be sharing three simple instant high courage questions that you can ask yourself when you face with unexpected opportunities. And I know it can be scary sometimes to step up. So these questions makes it effortless. It helps you and you can ask them and get instant courage. And also uh, during this challenge, we're gonna work on how you can know with certainty that you are making the right decision for you your life and your business, your mission. And then we cover as well the number one choice that you can make to be a courageous, successful, heart-centered person, both professionally and personally. So if you are ready to say yes, to speaking up and going after the life you want, then join this challenge. It would be lovely to have you there. And the link, I believe you will put it in the comments below. So join, and this is such an opportunity to also be in a very supportive, encouraging environment where we support each others during these five days. Yeah, definitely. I will put uh, not only the link to your challenge down there, <laughs> but also um, you have uh, also a Facebook group and uh, your, your website. 
I will put all these links down so that people can directly uh, get in contact with you. So, and, yeah. <laughs> so what what, um, it, what is your group about? You already mentioned it before that you have a Facebook group that uh, this is kind of um, yeah uh, getting together with uh, so, so open-minded people. And can you tell? A little bit more about your your Facebook group. Who is in there, and what are you um, posting in there? Yes, absolutely. So my group is called Light Workers Who Succeed on Purpose, and it is meant for people who have a calling in their heart to help others, to raise awareness, and just to create a meaningful contribution in their own way. And we have there people from all sorts of life, like people who are doing just inner work for themselves. They are welcome. Then there are people who are working for somebody else. We have even lawyers there. We have teachers, people who are using their light to serve others in, in different professions. So they are welcome. And then we have entrepreneurs, business owners who want to share their work and light with the world, sharing their gifts. So they are welcome there. So it is really a place for people who resonate with the word light worker. Because that's why I have it in the group name because it's normally people who feel called to join they are the people who want to just bring light into this world on their own way. And that's like what we can do with light is just there are so many things you can do. So it is an open group for all who feel called to do light work on their own way. And we do have daily themes there which are meant to support and encourage us on our journey so that we keep taking those steps forward and we get support and connection from others in the community. So it's very loving and supportive group of people that I feel so blessed to have them in the group because it is such a joy to see what's possible. And it is also a place where you can get that support and get that encouragement that it is possible to take those steps towards your dreams. Wow, this sounds great. So I would ask everybody to join your group and yeah, get inspired and, and share their, their thoughts and ideas and yeah, to help them grow themselves. Very, very welcome, I think, yeah. So uh, last but not least, I would ask you, do you have um, some uh, special ideas or tips that you want to share uh, with my audience um, that are really coming from your heart? One of the things I would love to share, and this just came to my mind right now, so I'm just organizing my thoughts. <laughs> So the thing that came to my mind and I want to share with your audience is that when you focus on your why, why you want to do what you feel called to do, that can empower you to take that first step. And I know it can be scary when you can't see the whole way, but when you take that step forward, you might be able to see the next step and then the next one and the next one. And that way, when you are saying yes, when you are choosing to trust that your dream was given to you for a reason. And when you choose to believe in your dream, it will just empower you because you are the first one that need to believe in your dream. When you start believing in your dream, the others around you get that 
energy, energetic vibration as well, when you are solid behind your dream, that is when the change starts happening. And it is all those things, they start within. So you can start right now, right now today, to start shifting the feeling within. And the first step here is deciding that I am willing to say yes to my dream. So that's what came forward for me. Wow, this is fantastic. And thank you very much for sharing this. You're welcome. Sometimes I get these messages, I channel them. So it's, <laughs> I'm still learning, like, how do I communicate this message that comes forward? And it is uh, such a gift, of course, and I'm learning how to, how to share it. Yeah, so this was really, really great. And I think, yeah, we have, if this information comes through, if this is uh, channeled by you, this has to be shared and because it is important, of course. So thank you very much for being my guest on the show today and giving me the time for my audience. And yeah, thank you very much for being here. Thank you for having me. See you soon. Bye-bye.